but uh, I think uh, we're not quite convinced that he's the best sprinter in the world, but maybe right now. Nevertheless, Paris-Nice, as we mentioned, Tad Bogaccia, Jonas Bingo. Is this the best rivalry in cycling right now in terms of GC? I'm not counting much about oh. what Van Aert because that is a fantastic rivalry. But Tad Bogaccia and Jonas Bingo, the rivalry kind of started in a way at the Tour of the Basque Country in 2021. Then the Tour de France, we know, 2022 as well. And then Torino as well last year. That was, yeah, went completely in the favor of Tad Bogaccia. He was so dominant there. But now here, Paris Nice, first of them, both of them debutants, and then this Tour de France coming into it. Is this the kind of the Greg LeMond, the Bernard Eno, even though that's not really true because they were on the same team at one point? Is this a Andy Sleck Contador kind of thing, but a bit more similar kind of riders to some respect? I kind of think it is, which is very exciting because we go through these phases in cycling where you do get the clash of titans. Of course, it hasn't always been that way. You know, the Froome era, we were all very aware of Froome's dominance. Yes, there were people who came and went who challenged him, like a, a Quintana, which I know is a little bit sketchy, perhaps, considering what he's doing. But anyway, glossing over that, like Contador and, and, and others, you know, Froome has been challenged, but it's the first time in a while where we've really had a, an absolute kind of mano a mano, really kind of trading punches, and you're not quite too sure who's going to be coming out on top when you bash them together. Um, I feel like what's quite interesting is that Remco doesn't really have that with, with anyone. You know, Remco doesn't really have this rivalry, does he? You say that Sasha Vlasov. It's it's been covered extensively <laughs> on, on, on on the Cycling yeah, Bane main channel. I've <laughs> I've got a many a run about, about how Sasha Vlasov um keeps Aven Nepal. That's that's the secret rivalry no one's talking about. <laughs> but is. like the Contador Andy Sleck, obviously, I, I love that uh, rivalry. It's my two favorite riders. And that was kind of 2009, 2010, sort of 2011, but Contador was coming back off the back of the 2011 Giro. And then he had his whole 2010 aftermath that he was pulling into that Tour de France. But so that that's free Tour de France is where they kind of went head to head. Here, next year, or this year's Tour de France, that's going to be three. And we're potentially going to be see four, five, six, because they're still very young, these two. Yeah. What's going to change? Cool. Like, nothing's going to change. These two, maybe, like, it's, maybe a Remco can be in the conversation as well, but these two are firmly the strongest two riders, and they're relatively young as well. I mean, I, I think, I mean, I hope that it is like this. And like you say, maybe Remco will come into the, into the equation as well. I see really only the thing, like you are saying, what's going to change. I see really it being UAE, changing as a team to perhaps acquire some more some different talents because i think at the moment people can quite unanimously agree that yumbo visma is stronger than uae team emirates in terms of domestiques i think i mean come on they've got wild van Aert, and like roglic gets put into a domestique role sep Kuz, Krauschweg, McNulty, Mc, McNulty Soler, Micah. It's like Micah's going to be That's a strong retiring. team. It I'm strong. defending UAE here. But What's I happening, like Ewan? Mano a Mano, I think that Yuma Visma are stronger. And I think the way that this will change is that, Yuma Viz- is that UAE get even stronger to come up to the like the same level as Yumbo. And at that point, I think that Pagacha could become more dominant because Pagacha really likes that person who's like the... Um, I know they've got Trent in. But they lack the Wout Van Aert sort of cobbled master kind of jack of all traits who can be there at his side. He doesn't need them. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, true. Maybe he just doesn't need them. Exactly that. But I think Jan Bevisma, as you say, sort of have more of these Swiss army now of kind of riders. Christophe Laporte, Wout Van Aert, Tish Benoit as well. Now Jan Tratnik is definitely... Um, a new Swiss army knife to add to their collection. Where UAE don't quite have have the same. They have a lot of strong climbers, but not sort of riders who you can rely on to be everywhere and also be there be there in a time trial. Michael Biel, maybe. But they're signing more guys in the sort of Swiss army knife vein, I'm looking towards Tim Wellens, who's great over many terrains, quite similar to Jan Tratnik. They're getting in these guys to try to match Jumbo Visma. I think on a brute uphill force, UAE are a stronger team. We saw that at at Planche de Belfi last year. I mean, I, I can I can get on board with, yeah, UAE are probably stronger uphill, but I think, like you say, that Jumbo, I think, over the other rolling terrain and 
you know, basically, if you put, if you were to put me into a team and you're saying it's going to be a crosswind day, I'm taking you, I'm taking Jumbo Visma every day of the week because I, I just don't think that UE have the talent. But that's not saying that they won't do in the future. That's where UE will improve, and I think that Pogacar could become more dominant than than Jonas because I think that as a rider, I prefer, well, preferring doesn't really have much to do with it. I think that Pogacar is more spontaneous and therefore more likely to take the, the spontaneous leaps mm-hmm. which could get him like into a more favorable race, race position i feel like Jonas is more calculated and i feel like pigaccio overall is the better racer which could be more beneficial or micah tells him to get on with it as he did at love Plage. <laughs> i agree 100 pigaccio is the better racer I, I think he's there contending classic profiles hilly days he can sprint pretty well Jonas can't do that i think even today in paris we saw pigaccio's kick there got him the six seconds that vingo didn't uh, didn't get I, I said it in the cycling day in, um preview over on the extra channel that pogac is going to sweep up th- these bonus seconds because he's got that kick and in a race like paris nice that's super important maybe the tour de france it's less important because it's a longer race there's more opportunity for bigger gaps to be made but in sort of one week long stage racing i feel like pogac might have the edge yeah it's definitely going to be a rivalry for years to come probably one of the most exciting rivalries we've had this, this is kind of everything we wanted and more from uh from the Pog and Rog battle that never really was. Two guys from these two sort of mega teams going at it. It doesn't quite have the same narrative uh, as the Pog and Rog uh, narrative of them being from the same country. One's old, one's young. But I think v- Vingo and Pogacar, they're very different guys, but there's a mutual respect between them that I think is very honorable. Even today in Paris, we saw it. They um, fist bump before the beginning of the stage. They were talking during the stage it doesn't feel as tense as sort of Schleck and Contador, or to some extent, Ino and Le Monde. It feels quite cordial between them, which probably points towards it there being more sort of fun racing, where it's not sort of spiteful, if you get what I mean. It's and not going to be controversial. I'll say that. Spiteful's great. The drama, the intrigue. But yeah, you're right. They're both really nice guys. And mm. it is the fact that we're not seeing a Chris Froome Quintana, where it's kind of like Quintana beats him in a stage where Froome loses 10 seconds, maybe, but he wins every single tour. This is, they have beaten each other. And Ewan mentioned that in a previous episode that Pogac actually was human for the first time in his whole career. And, uh, yeah, okay, there is the asterisk that UAE kind of imploded because of COVID and all this. So he's very isolated as well. But the fact that they've beaten each other makes this so much more exciting. Whereas the Andy Sleck Contador, there was kind of, yeah, I know Andy Sleck is the 2010 winner. I shouldn't do that because he is. But it's not like he destroyed Contador in a one-on-one battle. The mythical yep. Tourmalet stage, he never got ri- he never put Contador in trouble. Whereas here, we never know what could happen. Yeah, true. But maybe maybe we're sniffing too much into the one Tour de France we've seen them both clash at. Do you, I'm sorry, I, I don't really count 2021 as being a rivalry. Pogaccia was five minutes ahead of me going. Yeah, to that's true as well. And the one time Pogaccia challenged on Von Two, Pogaccia came back. He actually beat him in in, in on that the stage. That was not a drop. I'm sorry. Like there were so <laughs> many videos about Pogaccia got dropped. He did not get dropped. Like. <laughs> I don't take the Basque Country argument from 2021. That was Pog and Rock and Vingago happened to be in a good place. Um, he was being used as 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 a teammate there. Marking but cruises, yeah. We've only seen the real sort of Pogacar and Vingago once at a Grand Tour setting. 